Last night at the 4 o'clock Mass, we had a beautiful celebration of confirmation. We had approximately 20 young people who were confirmed. Bishop Labashi was here. And so they stood here and here. And he reminded them that just as Peter had denied the Lord three times, he was given an opportunity to repent and to tell the Lord that he loved them three times. And so he said to them, you're going to get an opportunity to renounce the devil three times. And then you're going to get an opportunity to claim God for yourselves three times. Do you reject Satan? I do. And all his works? I do. And all his empty promises? I do. Do you believe in God, the Father, the Almighty? I do. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord? I do. And do you believe in the Holy Spirit? I do. And yet we knew that as they were promising and claiming Christ for themselves as their Lord and Savior, that they would be faithful we're all like Peter. We have the best of intentions to be honest and to be faithful. Just like when couples walk down the aisle here and promise to be faithful to one another all of the days of their lives. And yet, no one faithfully does that. Every married couple in this church this morning knows that they constantly have to be reconciling themselves to their spouse. You know, I sometimes ask the guys, are you, ever con are you ever confused about when you're in your wife's good graces? Oh, no, Father. <laughs> are you confused when you're not in her good graces? Oh, no, Father. <laughs> See, we know that stuff. We know when we're, when we're in right relationship and we know when we're not. And although we have the best of intentions to be faithful, stuff happens. And so you have this character, Peter. Lord, even though all of these people, all of these guys over here, all these knuckleheads, although they deny you, I will never deny you. It wouldn't be much, much later that before a fire, Peter would deny Jesus three times. And so Jesus asks him the question this morning in the gospel, Peter do you love me more than these, the ones that you said that you would? It's interesting because as oftentimes we experience in the scriptures, things don't always translate well. The verb to love is different. Jesus asks Peter, Peter, do you love me? And what he's asking him is, do you love me with a self-sacrificing kind of love? Do you love me with an agape kind of love? Will you give yourself to me and for me? And Peter responds by saying, Oh Lord, you know that I like you. It's a filios. It's a friendship. You see, so Jesus asks him again a second time, Peter, do you love me with a self-sacrificing kind of love? Lord, you know everything. You, you know that I like you. We're buddies. And yet the third time, Jesus recognizing the weakness in Peter and in each and every one of us, meets him where he's at and says, Peter, do you love me enough to be my friend? Do you like me? And then Peter responds, Lord, you know that I like you. And so we're all wounded vessels. And I find it very interesting, how is it possible that this man, Peter, that in the moment of his weakness, denies knowing Jesus. 
You know, this is, think about this for a minute. We walk by people every single day that we don't know and we never acknowledge them. And that's not a problem. Because you don't acknowledge on, on, you know, frequently someone that you don't know. But imagine somebody walking by you. But imagine somebody walking by you that you're very friendly with. And they treat you like they don't even know you. Think about what that would do. That's what happened with Peter and Jesus. It was that kind of a denial. I don't know the man. I've never been with him. And yet, to be able to deny him, and yet at another time, when Jesus says to him, Peter, you know you did what you wanted to do for most of your life, but the day is going to come when somebody else is going to bring you to places you don't want to go. And Peter would die a very heroic death for Christ. How is it possible that in the same person you have on the one hand someone so weak, and on the other hand, someone who seems to be so strong that he will not deny his faith and witnesses to Christ. How is it possible that people can give themselves for that kind of love? Well, ask most married couples and they'll tell you. I think that what happens I think there's a fallacy when we say, you know, I'm falling in love. I don't believe that people fall in love. They grow in love. And so that's why oftentimes when you talk to people who've been married for 50 years, you hear them say, I'm more in love with my spouse today than I was the day that I married. I'll tell you, I saw that lived out last weekend on Curcio. I love Curcio. I think Curcio is one of the best kept secrets that we have in a Catholic church. But it's probably one of the best ways that we have to evangelize people because for many people, it's the first time that they have a real encounter with the living God. And so, you know, we have a custom in our diocese where the men go first. Because customarily, women are here and men are down here. And so we want to give the guys a chance to catch up. And so the men go in Curcio and they come home and their wives question them, well, what was it like? And of course, they're like tight-lipped and they want to say anything. So automatically, the women are suspicious. And so then the wives go on Curcio. And you know, they get there on Thursday night and they're all kind of, oh, I don't know about this. And everybody's kind of to themselves. And over the weekend, you see the miracle begin to happen. You see the love of God and the love of Christ begin to touch their hearts. But what touched me the most was the witness of one particular individual who got up at the end of the weekend and said this. I fell in love with my husband all over again this weekend. You see, when the love of God touches us, it's the love of God, it's the grace of God, it's the life of God within us that enables us to be able to give ourselves to another. It's not that we have loved God that God has first loved us. And so when we're touched by that love, when we're touched by the power of the Spirit, it has a real effect upon us. And so for the people who were present and who heard this woman say this, it touched them as well. Because we know how powerful a statement that is. 
I love you. And yet I love you is not a feeling. I love you is an action word that finds itself in the giving of the self, in the self-donation to the other. I love you. I've said this before, but I learned the meaning of that when I watched my mother take care of my father at the end of his life. When he couldn't dress himself and he couldn't feed himself and he couldn't bathe himself. And my mother did all those things for him. I learned by watching my mother what loving meant. I love you is a powerful, powerful 